So I just got this update in Rats and Blazes Studio and at this moment it is the latest version is 1.4.0 so that is the new version that just shipped and when I was reading the improvements then it was amazing to see that the debugging support is now available so now we can actually go and debug our applications inside Rats and Blazes Studio. There have also been some improvements to the go to file dialog and then they have done so we can use the uninitialized async in Inside the redirect to login file and they explain it so that we avoid some of the navigation exceptions but for me the huge deal with this update is the debugging tool and I've just updated Rats and Blazes Studio so I'll just show you how it looks and how it works so I'll just open Rats and Blazes Studio and the first thing that we have to notice is the button where we are going to run the applications now we have a drop down menu we can click on and we can choose if we want to run the application or if you want to debug it and I have already played around with it a bit so you can see I have already set it to debugging and then we also got this tab over here the debugger tab where we're going to get displayed the variables we can see the call stack and we have some breakpoints we can see so when I set a new breakpoint it will just display under here and right now I just have a simple application with a rats and data grid that is going to fetch some data from my database and then it will save it to this employees variable where we say that we call our DB service and we get the employees and let's say that we want to debug that then it's actually just like Visual Studio where you're going to set a breakpoint and now you can see we added the breakpoint over in our breakpoints and it's actually pretty nice that we can see this list of breakpoints we can see where the breakpoints are in which file they are and also what line it is on and if we try to go to the menu up here and say run then you can see how you use the debugger with shortcuts. So to start debugging, we have to use F5. And if we want to run it without debugging, we can hit Control F5. And we can also stop the debugging with Shift F5. And we do also have that we can step over things and step into them and step out of them. And also just to continue the debugging, you also have to hit F5. You can also toggle the breakpoint by hitting F9. So when I stay on this line and hit F9, you can see that I just toggled this breakpoint. But now let's try to hit F5. So we go and debug it. So now you can see it started up here. And because this breakpoint is inside our index.razor file, then it actually hit a breakpoint when loading the page because it's just trying to load the page. So on our uninitialized async method that is going to be run when we load the page for the first time, it just hit the breakpoint that we put on this line. So now you can see over here, we can see the call stack and we can also see the variables now. So we have this, which just indicate that we are on this page now. So if we click on this, you can see we have all the properties and these are all the default things that are in a application when we created inside Ransom Blazer Studio. If we go to the data tab, oh, and that's actually a thing I also have to remember to tell you, we cannot edit the text right now. It's in as you can see, if I hit space, you can see cannot edit in read only editor. And that's because when we debug, the whole editor is becoming read only. But if we just remember some of these variables, the dialog service, the tooltip service, and we also have the hub connection that's actually one I set up here by myself. And as you can see right now, we have the employees right here which is null right now because we have not executed this line yet. But if I go and hit F10, then we can now see that the employees has got some values and this is a I curable. So it will have a lot of different stuff inside it. This is actually the first time I sit with this debugger. So I also have to learn it a little better and learn what it can and what it cannot. But if we just stop the debugging, I think it was shift F5 like this. Then we actually have to go to the split view. I didn't know we should go to the split view, but of course it makes sense because we want to see the data here. I want to go to the data tab so we could see the dialogue service and all the other properties that just come in by default. So let's try and run it again because I saw then it actually blurred this out. So as you can see now, the application hit this breakpoint and now you can see this is blurred. And also my UI, I actually have a, an error here, but it also blur this section. And if we go to the methods, methods, it also blur this. And now when it's a read only editor that it is converting to when we debug, it will make sense that this is blurred out. So you cannot edit anything. But I really think this is a step in the right direction for Rats and Blazer Studio. I've been using Rats and Blazer Studio on and off for like 
two months or something, three months. And I think this debugger will be a huge step to not have to open Visual Studio to debug so that we can actually just stay inside Resin Blazor Studio. But thank you for watching. And the Resin team should just continue to improve Resin Blazor Studio. They are doing an amazing job. And actually, since I started using the program, there has been happening a lot. So I'll just say keep it up. And then please like this video and subscribe to my channel. And else just have a nice day. Bye.